Hi, it's Katrina. Number 10. Grotto of the Seven Sleepers The Grotto of the Seven Sleepers is an ancient necropolis from the days of the Byzantine Empire, consisting of dozens of different tombs carved into the rock to create an underground catacomb. Located in Ephesus, Turkey, there is a ruined church here, natural caves that had once been filled to the brim with bodies, and graves dug as recently as the 6th century AD. This was a place of serious Christian beliefs, as is obvious by the treasures archaeologists have pulled out of the tombs. They have found all kinds of things decorated with the sign of the cross, objects painted with scenes from the Old Testament, and multiple references to Adam and Eve, Abraham and Isaac, and even Daniel. But the most mysterious part about the grotto is the legend that comes with it. In Christian mythology, there is a story about seven young men who were being persecuted by the Romans for their belief in Jesus. Instead of renouncing their faith, they went to hide in a mountain cave. As they prayed for guidance, all seven of the young men fell asleep. They were discovered asleep in the cave. The emperor had the entrance sealed, and 250 years later, the cave was reopened. By this time, Christianity was no longer persecuted and was actually the religion of Rome. Those who broke open the entrance to the cave were shocked to see that these seven sleepers were still fast asleep. Number 9. Bronze Age Ireland In County Galway, Ireland, a group of workers carrying out routine fieldwork came across a mysterious fortress from the Bronze Age. Field archaeologist Michael Gibbons says this place is almost 3,200 years old and was once an absolutely massive structure. The remains of the rock fortress stretch 1,300 feet from north to south and 328 feet from east to west. This may not sound that big, but it was absolutely megalithic for a fortress built of rock especially back when most people were living in huts. One thing that's quite interesting is that Michael says whoever built this fortress chose the densest part of the forest they could find. They wanted to make it extremely difficult for any enemies to reach, which definitely worked. Seeing as it wasn't until the 2020s that modern people in the tiny country of Ireland found it, people 3,000 years ago wouldn't have had a chance. The fortress was big enough to house about 200 people, and the entire landscape has a certain otherworldly quality to it. It's incredibly Irish, with the stone walls concealed in beautiful greenery. Sadly, nobody knows exactly who built the site, only that they were a very old Irish people. They may have been a secluded group, seeing as they hid themselves deep in the forest like elves. Number 8. Ancient City of Susa Shush, also known as the city of Susa, is considered one of the oldest settlements in human existence. It's definitely not the oldest, but it's one of them, with a history going back 6,000 years. It was known in its heyday for its magnificence, one of the most splendid cities in all of Iran. It was built over top of a village that dates back even further to 7,000 years ago. It was the Elamite people who first lived in Susa, they were considered a mountain people, and they migrated down into the flatlands and made Susa their capital for nearly 2,000 years. But as time wore on, civilizations began to rise and fall. The Sumerians took over the city, the population boomed, and trade thrived. Then the Assyrians destroyed it, the capital was rebuilt, and it became the second capital of the kings of the Achaemenid Empire. By the end of the 4th century BC, Susa had lost its purpose, and it was populated completely by Greeks and then faded into obscurity. That was until the 7th century, when it boomed on the Silk Road as an important trading stop. This boosted the city back up to heights it hadn't seen in 5,000 years, only to be destroyed shortly after by the Arab invaders. These days, it's just a ruin, with the more recent remains of fortifications left behind by the French. Number 7. Mamaria Mamaria is a jungle region in southeast Peru, an incredibly isolated place where not too many visitors go. What makes it such a fascinating ancient site is that it's home to stone ruins. These ruins are all that remain of an extremely old coca plantation that had been used by the Inca centuries ago. 
The first person to enter Mamaria since the ancient Inca was explorer Goyo Toledo, a local Peruvian. It took him and his team nearly two months of fighting through the jungle just to reach it, a journey which nearly killed them. Fast forward 40 years, there have still been very few expeditions out into this part of the jungle. What we do know is that even to the Inca, this was a frontier land. It was the farthest extent of their empire and was used strictly to provide coca to the rest of the Inca way up in the Andes. But when the Spaniards came and destroyed the highland Inca, those living in the jungle were forgotten. Then, because of their remote location, the people just sort of vanished. They abandoned their coca facilities and, as far as we know, disappeared deeper into the jungle. Number 6. Rock Bentaiga There is an extremely mysterious rock formation located on Gran Canaria and the Canary Islands. It's called Rock Bentaiga and it's directly connected to the ancient Guanche people who lived here far before the Europeans ever showed up. Archaeologists have found all kinds of artifacts near the rock and in the surrounding mountains, showing a sophisticated civilization living here for at least 1,000 years prior to 1402. That was when the island was conquered by the Spanish. Once that happened, the Guanches were forced to give up their traditional way of life and assimilate. Not much is left of the Guanche today, other than some old pieces of rock art, the fragmented ruins of settlements, and a strange area carved near the top of Rokbentaiga. Nobody is exactly sure what the thing carved at the top is, but it definitely looks like some sort of ceremonial place of importance. It's likely that the Guanche people traveled high up to the top of this rocky outcrop to commune with the spirits, or to give praise to whatever mysterious gods they may have worshipped. There is another mysterious aspect to Gran Canaria, and it has to do with the legend of Atlantis. There has been quite a lot of speculation that the Canary Islands, which are located off the coast of Morocco and still belong to Spain, are in fact the real location of Atlantis. Archaeological evidence shows that the islands were only populated as far back as 2000 BC, but there could be evidence we haven't found yet. Some experts suggest all the different pieces of land in the Canary Islands had once been connected, so there would have been only one island. But when the earthquake came that destroyed Atlantis, the land was fractured into dozens of smaller islands. What do you think about this theory? Let me know in the comments below. Number 5. Duropolis A team of scientists from Bournemouth University were exploring the Iron Age site of Duropolis when they uncovered something fascinating. These archaeology students found human and animal skeletons buried deep in mysterious pits in southwest England. These pits had originally been used as storage for grain, then later filled with dead bodies. Duropolis is extremely old. People were living here at least as far back as 100 BC, in a small settlement of farmers. When the archaeologists were recently digging, they found the ruins of roundhouses, which were ordinary hut-like houses during the Iron Age. But they also discovered many storage pits. Some of them had been repurposed into graves, and researchers say it shows just how unique Dorset County was 2,000 years ago. The thing about it is that from the start of the Iron Age in Britain, around 750 BC, up until the Roman invasion of 43 AD, most communities didn't use cemeteries. They would either burn their dead or simply throw them in the river. But in Dorset, they had actual graveyards, and many of them had started out as storage pits where excess agricultural goods would have been kept. In Duropolis, we can actually see an entirely different concept of life after death unfolding. While everyone else in Britain was busy burning bodies like they were just dead meat, the citizens of Duropolis were dumping them into pits and then filling those pits with grave goods. Archaeologists have found the remains of food and beverages inside the pits. These were probably intended to be gifts to the gods, and so we can see highly advanced cultic worship happening here. Number 4. Old Sarum Old Sarum is yet another fascinating place from the Iron Age in England, but it's quite a bit different from the primitive settlement at Duropolis. Old Sarum was a mix between a castle and cathedral inside of a classic Iron Age fortification. For over 150 years, 
This place was considered the epicenter of an ecclesiastical government in England. However, in the year 1226, the cathedral was moved to the larger city of Salisbury. The castle inside the fortress remained an important administrative center for another century or so, and all of Old Sarum lived up until 1832. The city's life began in the year 400 BC. It was a typical Iron Age hill fort, meaning the city itself was hidden inside a large enclosure of both wood and earth, creating a massive barricade. It was essentially a city hemmed in by primitive castle walls. When the Romans showed up in 43 AD, the town became known as Sorviodunum. By no fault of its own, the city became wildly important for the Romans. It had three roads connecting it to the north and east, making it a major hub for travelers. There is no more record of the city up until 1003. Then William the Conqueror came along, and Old Sarum transformed into something amazing. A mot was built up around the center of the hill fort, creating multiple levels of fortification. The inside of the fortress became an actual castle made of towers, halls, and extensive apartments. The cathedrals were built, and it became one of the most impressively evolved Iron Age cities in England. Sadly, there is absolutely nothing left of it today except the outlines of some buildings in a green field. Number 3. Gezer Gezer is a lost city in Israel, a desolate place that over 3,000 years ago was a center of the thriving Canaanite culture. The story begins with the biblical exodus from Egypt. When the Israelites returned to the land supposedly promised to them by God, they began to take over all the fortified cities of the Canaanites. And while this is a biblical story, many parts of it are true. The Israelites did fight the Canaanites, and they conquered most of their stuff. But not every last city was within their reach. Gezer, located way out on the edge of the coastal plains, wasn't immediately conquered. It wouldn't be for hundreds of years later that a certain Egyptian pharaoh devastated the city, then offered it as a gift to King Solomon of the Israelites as a dowry for Solomon's marriage to his daughter. Because Gezer was one of the last Canaanite cities to be conquered, it's one of the most impressive. It has one of the largest temples ever found in Israel, a massive gate from which people would have entered the place, and is home to some serious mystery. In the Bible, it's said that the Canaanites were a savage people. They supposedly sacrificed children and practiced ritualistic prostitution. However, archaeologists don't actually know if any of this is true or if it was just the narrative of the time. Oddly enough, there has been some evidence to suggest the Bible might actually be right. For example, jars have been discovered at Gezer containing the skeletons of very young infants, which may have actually been boiled alive. Number 2. Takalik Abaj Takalik Abaj is an ancient archaeological site from around the year 1000 BC although its history stretches all the way to 1200 AD. It's a surprising place because it shows just how the ancient Olmec culture in Mesoamerica influenced the Maya culture that came after. The site itself was once part of a trade network that connected most Olmec communities along the Pacific Slope all the way from El Salvador up into the Guatemalan highlands. There is even some evidence that suggests the Olmec traders traveled all the way to Teotihuacan in central Mexico. This was centuries before the huge cities of Tikal and Cozumel. The Olmec probably heavily influenced the Maya, but historians can't agree on exactly where the Maya came from. They don't know if the Maya developed directly from the Olmec, or if the Maya was a totally different group that came into existence after them. Either way, the Maya artwork and architecture was obviously inspired by the earlier Olmec. Nowhere is that more obvious than Takalik Abaj. It has the largest collection of Olmec sculptures in the region, over 200 beautifully crafted sculptures made from stone. There are also numerous altars and tombs, jade funerary masks, an advanced drainage system, and over 70 unique structures, all hiding in the middle of the jungle in Guatemala. Number 1. Abandoned Mansion Hidden in the dense forest of the Hudson Valley, New York, there is a ruin found near the small town of Cold Spring. It was once a very luxurious mansion, 
and urban explorers used to stumble upon it every now and then, but not many knew its history. In the year 1917, Edward Joel Cornish and his new bride, Selina Bliss Carter Cornish, moved into an estate in the woodland just north of the small town. It turned out to be an enormous mansion with swimming pools, beautiful gardens, and all the luxurious furnishings the rich people in the 1900s could afford. In 1938, the couple died within two weeks of each other. A nephew inherited the estate but didn't really do much about it. The mansion fell into disrepair, and later on a fire destroyed the rest. Most of it was reclaimed by the forest. Every now and then, hikers would come across it, and a local teacher decided to write a book. Descendants of the Cornish couple came forward to fill in the gaps of the mansion's history, and now it is currently being cleaned up and marked as part of Hudson Highlands State Park. Thanks for watching! Which place was your favorite? Let me know in the comments below and be sure to subscribe if you haven't already! See you soon! Bye!